happy bright and early um i'm here with a laundry list of things to do this is closer it's like five in the morning um we're at a location to do a hood cleaning so lovely uh, so I'm not going to be partaking in that, but while the hood cleaning staff is doing that, um, I rode out here with them to take care of a couple of things. We've got this Norlake topping cabinet, and the TV is very loud. We have this cake freezer that is not working. So, let's go Norlake. So, kind of funny business. The inside fans weren't running. Oh, the other compressor that just shut down for some reason. We've got that. We've got all this. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I changed this compressor a year ago. But what's weird is that, again, we don't have inside fans. So this unit should have a little pressure control there, yep. All right, so we need to see why the inside fans aren't running. Why my condensing unit cycling on and off. Maybe we got a bad thermostat, maybe we got a bad defrost timer. So many possibilities. Okay, so I don't have any heat on my heater coil, which I was expecting to find, to be honest. The fact that neither of my fans are running and they don't feel like they're locked up makes me wonder if we don't have a, uh, a defrost clock timer failure. <clears throat> because when we plug in the unit, these fans should start immediately, that's it. And the only time they should drop out is when we're in a defrost. So, let's pull one of these little guys and check for voltage. <clears throat> so, we do not have voltage to the fans right now. So then the question is, I know when I started, the inside fans weren't running, and when I got back here, the condenser had started. So, where are those fans? Oh, no, I've got power. Man, everything brings me to this guy. Let's check these circuits for a minute. So look how I've got, so this is when I changed the uh, compressor last time, I was explaining how to ohm out the compressor. And then here, heater, L1, comp, L2. All right. Now I've got it set. So this way, by the way. <clears throat> Presser red wire, L1, L2. Okay, very strange. I was back here monkeying with the wiring. And I turned the solenoid. And the unit started running. But I still don't have inside fans. So. Hey, we're putting out some heat now. Um, yeah, I just, all I did was unhook these two lit legs. And when I rehooked them, it took. Like it. So the reason I don't think it's a refrigeration issue or a pressure switch issue is the pressure switch only kills the condensing unit. It doesn't kill the EVAP fans. The only thing that is in between running and the EVAP fans is that. I think we're going to change that. Russell, oh, right. She's cooling like a champ. 
never changed the clock here. I've never changed that fan too. Look at it. That's not a frame rate issue. It's the cycle going on and off. Alright, the inside panel folds down. It just slides off. There's a little terminal block. Okay. Just slides off the block. And then bolts in the front. Uh, I keep these in my van in abundance because Norlake uses the crap out of them. So does beverage air. And they're pieces of garbage. But, energy efficiency, yay! Let's put computer fans in freezers. Yeah, whatever. I guess good if you're a service guy, but terrible. There she is. Bang. The exact replacement. So I can actually dial this down. This is an EDT 10. It's a 10 amp. It's good for 10 amps. Um, or this one's 15 amp. But unit only runs less than 8 amps. So we good. Uh, I normally, I'm bleeding through my old stock. I actually only started keeping the EDT 11s. Because what's the point, right? I can put an 11 on a 10, but I can't put a 10 on an 11. And the cost is literally pennies different. So just carry one thing. So I'm getting rid of my 10s, baby. And just because you think it's the same, don't ever take for granted. All right, look at your numbers over there. It's 3412, 3412. So, yep, I can wire for wire it. This one was set every 10 hours for 20 minutes. I'm gonna back it down to every eight hours. So I've got every eight hours, 15 minutes. Well, let's see what that does. Um, this is supposed to be bolted here. Well, it's supposed to be bolted here so that the button to engage the defrost is hanging. So we're gonna do that. So the old one I actually couldn't get to engage. Um, I held it down little button right there you hold it down and it's supposed to kick so let me hold that down it's a lot longer than you think it's like 20 seconds or so we'll find out from the video won't we? all right so two pronged problem and this is why you know I go back and I check again so this defrost clock is engaging uh, it's firing off the heater and it's disengaging the condensing unit the problem is this thing was running at 3 psi while the heaters were engaged. Da, 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 da. So, I'm gonna mount this, and then I'm gonna install the new low pressure control and screw them for putting that back there. I move it normally to over here, and then I run my cap tube over here on a splitter. I absolutely hate these guys for this reason. Why would you put that back there behind all these line sets? Behind everything. You know, that's just mean. Oh, meanies. Okay, here's the real ugly stuff that people don't like to show, but it's, uh, I think you can learn from my oops. So I got, I got to do wire management, right? So we're going to put all these together and then we're going to space them so nothing rubs on anything. But I got it fired up and I'm at 50 PSI and she's not coming on. So I was adjusting this like crazy. So what I had this set for was to cut in, if you look at the right number, we're gonna cut in at 40, okay? And we're gonna cut out at 10. So that means, uh-huh. But we didn't come on. There's my probe. What's going on? Well, what's going on is there's a Schrader core in here and there's no Schrader depressor here. Which isn't a crisis, there's a Schrader core here. So I'm gonna take this off, and then I'll pull the Schrader core out, put that back on, put this on, but it's like, really, Joe? Slipping, man. Now, hey, opa. <laughs> all right. Now, let's clean all this up while she runs. So how I do it was, not on the blazing hot discharge heat, but on the liquid line out. I put a zip tie with uh, an eye hole. Okay, so then you can run it on there, on there, 
Oh. And your lines are clear, they're not touching anything, nothing. 